can go ahead and get started today. Um, as you know, we'll wait for a few people to come in, but nonetheless, we go ahead and start uh, on time. But I want to wish everybody good morning for those who are tuning in. Uh, thank you all for joining New Spirit Church uh, here for Sunday school. And um, if you all remember last week, I brought the study from uh, Jonah chapter 1, um, but it was verses 1 through 3. And I wanted to go through and finish it through verse 6, and so this is what today's study is going to be. So last week we were uh, touching on verses 1 through 3, but because of so much good information, good dialogue, um, just a lot of good information in just these first three verses, um, I didn't get a chance to finish last week. So um, I wanted to go ahead and continue on uh, through verses 4 through 6. So if you have your Bibles today, we're going to be in Jonah chapter 1. Uh, verses 4 through 6. And as custom, before we begin, I like to open up our study with a little word of prayer. Lord Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for allowing us to gather together, for allowing us to, to, to hear your word and for us to, to, to study what you have to say to us this morning. Uh, we thank you for uh, this beautiful day and for allowing us to gather freely world that is uh, despises you we we cling to, on to you lord that we may learn and to grow and to seek you more uh, we we thank you for all that you do and we ask all these things allow your spirit to to, to run fluent here today lord and we thank you for all you do in your son's name amen, amen. and so um, if you'll have your bibles if i could get somebody to read uh jonah chapter 1 verse 4 and uh, the title of the study is God in the Storm. And if you recall from last week, we hear in verse 3, Jonah ran away from the Lord and he was heading towards Tarshish. And uh, he went down to Joppa where he found a ship uh, bound for the port. And so if you remember last week, uh, I talked about where Jonah was heading towards. He was heading towards Tarshish and uh, he got on this boat and he paid the fare and you can imagine the people on the boat you know just travelers just around that area but seeing jonah get on this boat it would have been a little shocking to see or at least a little it would have been somewhat of an odd thing sight to see you see this prophet getting on the ship and people don't know he's a prophet but they can tell that he's he's something different he's there's something unique about this person that's boarding the ship but nonetheless he pairs the, uh, he pays the fare and he gets on board and he's sailing towards Tarshish and remember where Tarshish is if you remember from last week's study um, Tarshish is off the west coast of Spain and remember at that no time that was the furthest west one can travel that was considered at that time the ends of the earth if somebody wanted to go towards the end of the earth they head towards Tarshish, and so that's exactly where Jonah was planning on going. And so, now we say California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, but you, if you remember, you know, uh, Jonah had to fulfill his purpose. God had called Jonah to to fill his. Uh, he he called him to go toward Nineveh. That was his purpose. He he needed to fulfill his purpose as a prophet to to go to Nineveh. And that was his mission where he needed to go to Nineveh. So you can imagine, you know, um, you know you're, you're in the army or you're in the military. The general calls you to go towards a certain destination. And, you know, you're not allowed to disobey orders when you're in the military. But imagine, you know, you get the orders from your higher command and you just flee the opposite direction as far away as possible. That's basically uh, what happens here. But so... You see this he was on a, his mission was to go to Nineveh to preach uh, to Nineveh and why was he supposed to go there if you all remember you remember why he was supposed to go to Nineveh yep. yeah because God called him to go there God called him to go and whenever God calls you you better listen because God you know he has a way of of th turning things around if you don't if you disobey him and so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens as a result of Jonah fleeing uh, of course Tarshish and so 
Could I get a volunteer to read verse 4? But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so the ship threatened to break up. Thank you. Yeah, so your, ver um, your version says um, tent is correct. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, yes, he yeah, so your, uh, the NIV says violent storm, but either way, um, the word violent, uh, it wasn't just so num it wasn't just an ordinary storm here. It, this was a violent storm. And in verse 4, you even see great winds too. So great wind and violent storm. So this wasn't some ordinary storm that, you know, you know, we see every day. This was this was sent by God. This was a God storm right here. And so God was furious with Jonah that he sent a great wind and a great storm, violent storm. And so this was God's reaction to uh, Jonah fleeing from his mission, from his from freeing what he was calling him to do. And so sometimes that happens in our lives, you know, where uh, we may be fleeing, we find ourselves in a great storm where we're supposed to be somewhere, where we're called to go to a certain place or do a certain thing. And sometimes God can send us storms in our life without ourselves knowing about it. I wonder sometimes if God doesn't just look down on us and just kind of smirk and say, ah, there goes Kirk again. There goes Jonah again. Well, let's let's put that wind, let's blow wind that way and get him in the right direction. Yeah, and you know what? And sometimes God will do things like that to, you know, humble ourselves. Sometimes he needs, he, he, we need a dose of humility to, you know, to really learn from our mistakes and our lessons. And, you know, but it could be a different, it could be a variety of different things. You know, sometimes God will send us storms because we're, we're disobeying him. Sometimes... Uh, it's the only way for us to really go back to where we're supposed to be. That's uh, whatever the reason may be. You know, uh, sometimes we may find ourselves in great storms in our lives, and you know, if we have eyes to see, we can realize what we're our, find ourselves into. One of the things that has really helped me with patience with my children is I I do try to put myself what what Kirk said about, you know, does God sometimes, you know, he probably looks at us like, oh, there goes Kirk again. Well, that's when I look at my children like, there Or you, sister, don't just throw it on me. Oh. And I go, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it happens to me all the time. I look at my kids, I'm like, there she goes again, there he goes again. Like, you know better, but there you go again. And so just as in the moment when they're doing something that they probably shouldn't, I have to just sit there and then, you know, there's grace, right? And I'm like, okay gonna deal with this but also remember like you do things that God you know is looking down at you like oh didn't I tell you not to do that didn't yeah. I you know so um yeah I, I would agree with Kirk that it's he definitely looks down at us like that <laughs> well, it happens to all of us I look at myself sometimes and me knowing better I find my going going back to you know my thoughts you know just kind of because what I'll do sometimes is I'll I'll go and I'll sometimes sit down and just think about what I did earlier that day. And sometimes I think to myself, what am I doing? Like, where well, there I go again, you know? And that happens to the best of us sometimes, even as believers, where, you know, we, we, we stumble, we sometimes fight at ourselves going the opposite direction without ourselves even knowing that. And, you know, that, that happens to all of us, even as believers. So, uh, you know, just don't, don't, don't feel discouraged when that, you know, you find yourself there. I mean, that's, it happens to the best of us, and even you know to non-believers as well. But is, is there a difference between a storm and a hurricane, or like what's worse? God's storm. Yeah, well, you know how hur hurricanes are usually violent storms. You know? Sometimes I feel all kinds of storms in my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wanted to pose a question. So why why does God send storms? Like wh why? What what's the purpose of this storm of the storm that he does? Is it because he is he because he wants to you know to see us fall down on our face and you know I say I told you so or is it a, some way of a I way? I think it's a way for us to. I mean, when when things are going wrong in our lives is when we look closest to God and and are looking for help, 
and when things are going great, you know, a lot a lot of people don't necessarily look to God for companionship and and uh, a relationship. But uh, when He does send those storms, we get to our knees pretty quick and and you know try to you know reconcile. Oh, they're, they're frightened. They're also frightened. Frightened. Particularly about your house and all your your family. I think that's a big factor. Mm. Uh, you yeah, know yeah. what's happened in the past, and guys. You know and all the stories people tell you about the things that happened to them. Mm. Yes, brother. I think um, I think there's actually two reasons why God can send you a storm. One is 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 kind of what Kirk's talking about. You know, it's times that when we're in a storm that we that we tend to lean on Him more. Um, you know, but I also believe that you know the storm. That storm could be a test, right? It could be it could be a time of testing, right? So God is sending you a storm to see how are you going to react to that, Amen. right? How are you going to approach that? Are you going to lean on Him and His understanding and work through it? But then also, I believe that we sometimes go through storms because God chastens us. It could be a chastening because you maybe knew better and still <clears throat> did something wrong that you knew wasn't pleasing to the Lord or was outside of God's will. And because God loves us, he has to chasten us. He has to correct us. Do you think God chases after us through storms? I, I think he can use a storm in your life to chasten you for doing something knowingly that it was incorrect and against his will. And yeah. so basically allowing you to now, okay, it's almost like that phrase, well, you made your bed, now lay in it, hmm. type thing. Hmm. But again, it's because he's a loving father. Because a father, if you see your child doing something wrong, you correct your child because you love them, not because you hate them, but because you love them and you don't want to see them get hurt or do something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother, people also mistaken uh, scenarios like that with God being like a, just this horrible uh, guy that, that picks on us, right? Mm -hmm. But the I think the 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 major or the the bigger picture here is that um, these storms are just a reminder of who God truly is. Like you look at, we just went over the Ten Commandments. The very first verse uh, or second verse says, uh, "I am the Lord who you are, God who brought you out of Egypt." Like there's a reminder there, you know. There's, um, uh, hey, I'm gonna send a storm. I need, I need you to understand and remember who's gonna, who that who you're gonna call on to save you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people mistaken that as a, uh, you know, God's picking on me or they blame God for the storm or things, things of that nature. Yes, because they sometimes associate storms with, you know, a, a f form of cruelty. Yeah. But sometimes God will send storms because. He needs us to learn a lesson, you know, and sometimes we may even find ourselves in the eye of the storm. You know, whenever, brother, you were mentioning, you know, hurricanes, you know how hurricanes work there. You know, the center of the, the hurricane, the eye of the storm is usually the most calm. And sometimes we are in the middle of that storm and sometimes things are going well for us. You know, you know, maybe we're financially set, you know, we've got things going well for us. But even though we're not following in the ways of God, we find ourselves in the eye of the storm where at any given moment, that storm's going to close in on us. And now it's just going to just all come crashing down, you know. And uh, I, th I think sometimes, too, that happens to a lot of people where, you know, where all things calm, although they're in the middle of a storm where, you know, they're it's just closing in on them slowly but surely. It's just closing in and eventually it just that the eye of the storm, but that calm, it just kept, it's just enveloped. And then now you're just, you're having to pick up the pieces of what originally where you were originally. But I wanted to just to share that with you, but thank you again. But uh, any of their comments or? And particularly if you're not a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you really know that they always say, everybody says there's nobody to depend on but God. So that's why they all, that's the time they'll run to God. Mm -hmm. And no other time. But they know there nobody can help them. Their husband can help. No one can help them. 
they're God. So that's the only choice there. <laughs> so that's another reason. Yeah, sometimes God, uh, people will use God as a, a break glass in an emergency situation. Yeah. But, you know, we, we've talked about it on numerous occasions where God is not some sort of uh, get out of jail free card or, you know, in case of emergency, break glass. I mean, God is, God is supposed to be the lamp of our lives. He's supposed to be our guidance and, you know, where we're supposed to go. And so ultimately, you know, in Jonah's case, He's supposed to have. He's supposed to follow in God's way, but you know, he like a rebellious child. You know, there he goes the opposite direction. You know, there he goes. And so, continue on with this lesson here. So this great wind uh, can only have been uh, the work of uh, God's sovereign hand. This was this was something that was uh, of a God level storm. And look at verse five here. I want I want to pay ten, I want to focus in on verse five. And so. Uh, so verse 4, then God uh, sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. You know, that 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 right there, the last part of verse 4, the ship was threatened to break up. Do you know how ferocious a storm has to be that the, a ship was threatening to break apart? Could you imagine how violent that storm must have been? You know, I mean, like, you, you see your... You see storms, you know, they, the boat gets rocked back and forth or, you know, the, the, the boat sometimes is, you know, may kind of be a little unsettled. But this storm was such violence, it almost threatened to break apart. It's almost like you can, you can sense that the ship is about to come apart at the seams. We're just going to all, we're going to all just like, we're all going to come down with this, the ship in a lot of ways. And uh, verse 5 right here, I think it encompasses the emotions of the sailors. And so all the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. I want to I want to focus in on this, the, the sailors. So notice these sailors here. So remember, if you're going to Tarshish, what kind of people would venture out on that journey? Is it just any other like local fishermen you know just people with you know who just kind of just have you know just simple like uh, sailors no if you're gonna go to Tarshish you're gonna have probably the most experienced uh, the most seafaring people that gonna venture on that journey and more likely this group of people were probably the Philistines uh, you know and if you remember you know uh, throughout scripture you see you know the philistines were described as great seafarers they were uh, israel's most uh, ferocious enemy you know goliath was a philistine you know we see examples throughout scripture where you know these were seafaring uh pagans you know these were highly skilled sailors you know you could have easily seen these people as like the navy seals of you know of sailing you know these were hardcore sailors who had years of experience people who have seen countless storms who have weathered through but this was unlike any storm they've ever encountered and imagine seeing the faces on these sailors this ferocious great wind and this violent storm something that was unlike they've ever experienced and a storm that violent that shook these sailors to their core that brought them to the point where they had to call out to their own god they were crying out you can see these imagine this like this hardcore like sailor captain this you know this manly just you know like <laughs> tough as nails sailor crying out like a kid because of how how scary the storm was i i i want to just throw that out there you know just let your mind wonder about how that scene would have pictured, but yet this was a, a God called Storm, and yet uh, they were calling out to their gods. I have a comment about that. Um, I have a client that he went to, and he said this past storm, not, not this week, but the past, that he was going in his car, and this is a big guy. He, he played in college football, I mean, like, big, and he was telling me, I, I, I don't believe in God, but I just start crying and praying because he saw the trees falling and, and everything. 
and and I was just like, but you don't believe it. He's like, well, just in case that I, I just he said I was crying because I saw my car like flipping this way and another way. So I cannot like relate to your sayers, you know, in moments like that when you feel like, man, there's nothing, I'm insignificant, there's nothing to do. Then that's when it comes that instinct that you know I need somebody bigger and you know to. to I'm glad you shared that. And, you know, you, you sometimes you'll see people or they like, oh, well, that, that person, you know, there's nothing can scare that off that person. But all it takes is for God to intervene and, you know, you see them go crying and just in fear, you know. But that's what God does sometimes to, to us, you know, where we may think to ourselves, oh, we're, I'm as strong as an ox, you know, nothing can shake the foundation of, you know, my life. But, I think God will say otherwise, amen? amen. And so, um, what, I wanted to also pose another question. What, what could have caused these sailors to cry out? Was it the storm that they encountered? Was it, uh, was it the fear that overwhelmed them? Like, what, what do you think caused them to cry out? And I mean, remember, these were, these were highly, highly skilled sailors that, you know, they've, I mean, they, they know that they've encountered storms before, but what do you think caused them to cry out to the point? Was that, do you think that was their last option? Do you think like they felt like they were gonna, they were gonna surely die or what do you think? Absolutely, brother. I think that they knew um, because of how violent the storm was, what you were explaining earlier, um, I don't think they've ever seen a storm that violent before with their experience. And that was their last cry out saying, man, this, this is it. Like, I, there's no other, there's, no, there's nothing else that we could do uh, that, that'll probably save our lives. I, I like watching that TV series, uh, Deadliest Catch. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen it, it's, it takes place up in, uh, off the Alaskan coast <laughs> in the Bering Sea, and <clears throat> you have these boats that are definitely much well, more well put together than this boat that they're on here in Jonah. I guarantee you. And, and they're out at sea and they're fishing for these crabs in seas that are sometimes 20 feet, 30 feet tall. These waves, huge, massive waves. And you'll see the guys on deck and they're out there and they're joking around and having a good time and they're fishing and they're working, but they're fishing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden something happens on the boat like the power goes out, the generator goes off and you see these guys who were two seconds ago joking around all of a sudden go into extreme panic mode because now they're at the mercy of the sea. Now without power to their boat, now they're at the mercy of the sea and they know that they're literally minutes away from dying. Yeah, yeah. you can imagine a frightening scene, you know. I wouldn't want to be part of that experience, sure. but. Yeah, we, we also see in the Gospels about the disciples when they were in that, you know, when Jesus and Jesus was sleeping, they were very, very scared. So it seems that those natural um, disasters or natural, uh, you know, phenomena, they cause you nothing but be humble and say, we're here. Mm -hmm. Everything could happen. You're right. I think also being experienced a storm that they not even heard like a tale of because a lot of the sales experience sail, like sailmen experience is like word of mouth from that time and then also like so like you you hear these stories of like storms and like these like um almost like tall tales of like these big storms and it's like also in that like area so like to actually experience it as like in the water in this boat and not having experienced anything like this as experienced sailors, I think it's also like, oh, this is what they were talking about, and those sailors didn't return, you know, type of vibes. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes too, a lot of stories they get, um, they're they exaggerated, you know, like you know, sometimes you'll you'll hear these stories about you know these. Uh, Navy uh, sailors, you know, or like they encountered a great storm Definitely and Navy. like, you know, it's Definitely like Navy the, all odds were against them. <laughs> and you know what, that's... You know, in the Marines and... That's right. And yeah, and... Everybody else. 
Yeah. Yeah, and you see these like these stories are almost elaborated to a point where it's like that's unbelievable. You know, it's like, but here they are, like face to face with you know a, a magnitude of a storm like this, and here they are crying out to their gods. Well, they're not just crying; they threw the cargo into the sea. Uh, imagine if that if every time they encountered a, a storm, they threw the cargo into the sea, they they'd be they wouldn't be eaten. They'd be out of jobs pretty yeah. quick. To add to that, that too, that's an extreme response to what I would call a, a storm of divine proportions. Yeah. They threw this. They they abandon. I mean, forget any hope of being able to make money. We just want to live. I mean, mm. that's an extreme response. I mean, that's just abandoning everything just to be able to preserve their lives. Wow. That sends a strong message there for them to be willing to abandon their cargo. Mm -hmm. Desperation. Yeah, and when, when you're in that state of mind too, you, you make decisions that are just not, there's no sense. It's actually uh, better to have cargo on a ship uh, to make the ship heavier so that you're not rocking and swaying as much as you as you would be. Well, them throwing that cargo out is just gonna make, you know, just it kind of tells you how they weren't thinking, how how they, uh, um, how much of how much fear they had. Yeah, and they're in that way maybe they were just, they were just on survival. Like their instincts kicked in where it's like I we're just trying to survive, you know, just you know whatever means necessary for us to survive this. But notice what Jonah's doing. Meanwhile, while all these things are happening. I want you to notice what what Jonah is doing. So, the second half of verse five. So you know they threw the cargo into the sea, the light in the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Brother, I just was reading here. You know, in verse three, it says. But Jonah rose and uh, to flee to Tarnish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship uh, going to Tarnish. So he paid the fare and went down into it. Okay, so he went down into the ship. Now, in verse 5, when the seas and everything was happening, he went down even further. So it's like he doubled down on his... I'm going to go even further into this, and I'm going to go go to sleep. I'm, it's like I'm going to close my eyes to what's going on. I'm going to double down on this and just pretend like it's not happening. I, I like him how you made that connection. You see, from whenever God calls Jonah, and just the dissension from where he arose when he went down to Joppa, down onto the ship, but then down below, even further onto the deck. And so at this point, I think he's just like, I've, I've made my bed, you know, I'm, you know, there's no turning back now. And so uh, this, while this is happening, how, how could, I'm curious to ask the class this question. What is he doing sleeping? How, how could Jonah be sleeping during a violent storm? What, what, how, how is that, a, a, how is that something that we as readers can could come to grips on like how how can anybody be asleep in a moment like this he's made a decision to give up he's from the moment that he he ran away he made a decision i'm not listening i don't care what it costs that's just what i see just wondering could there be a connection like christ was sleeping when the storms were coming he was in the ship too and he was asleep yes and, and woke him up they said hey but if you want to, if you want to compare the two uh, stories, you see how Jonah was asleep down during the storm, and how Jesus was asleep. Jesus asleep on this ship. He had full control of this the storm. He knew exactly what was going on. Jonah was oblivious to his surroundings. He he was trying to escape God. He was utterly controlless in this situation, unlike where Jesus, where the disciples were crying out in terror and terrified, Jesus controlled the sea with, you know, just with the uttering of his words. You know, he could command that sea to calm at an instant. Unlike Jonah in this case, he just was just trying to just block out everything. He was descending below as furthest as he possibly could to just get away. I, think I feel that, that we, that's the difference. I think that when we get into 
sometimes when we get, really get into the thick of it, you you do you close your eyes to you know the surroundings around you and just it's almost like I'm pr you know not proud. I don't want to use the word praying, but you're hoping that <clears throat> when you open your eyes back up that things will be different or changed. And, and I think he's just doubling down on on you know his running uh, from from you know his his calling, mm -hmm. and so he's just down there and you know kicking his heels up and. Maybe he yeah. had confidence. I don't. God would, would handle it. Maybe. You think he had confidence? Maybe. We don't know. Well, we know that he was asleep. So, uh, ultimately, you know, it was not just, it was a deep sleep too. So, uh, you know, in this situation, I, I think Jonah was just, this, knowing his decision was unfolding, I, you know, where God, you see the dissension of Jonah, you know, I think God had something, um, he was trying to, he was trying to get a grip of Jonah. And you see here in verse 6, how... He, he, you see where he's a uh, false and deep sleep, but verse six, you see the captain went to him and said, "How could you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe He will take notice of us and we will not perish." So, you see here that Jonah is asleep, and you see how imagine the scene where this this great storm and the boat's rocking, and the captain is like trying to walk, like the, the wind is blowing back and forth, and he's trying to get to, because uh, he had noticed Jonah getting onto the, the ship. If you remember, you know, they remembered this prophet getting on. It's like something's, something's unique. And so they, the captain goes to Jonah. It's like, hey, they're knocking on the door like, what are you doing? How are you asleep? There's a storm outside. Are you not paying attention? And he tells him, get up and call on your God. You can see it, when, you, when you read verse 6, it's almost in a way, this is God speaking through the captain. You can almost sense this is God's voice speaking to Jonah through this captain. A pagan captain, you know, a, a captain that, you know, even the pagans. That's the other thing. They were pagans. So they may have thought that Jonah was going to be a bad, sent there as bad, bad whatever, bad news to teach them all a lesson. You know, Maybe so. Since Th they're pagans. Thoughts yeah. on that, thoughts on that uh, comment? Uh, you know, it... Up above it says that they were praying to their gods, That's what I right? So they were praying to their gods, and then right. when they realize that their gods aren't doing anything, you know, it, it, it would be like a, a Muslim praying to Allah, and when Allah ain't taking it, all of a sudden he says, hey, I'm going to go talk to the Christians, and maybe, you know, their God will, will, will save us. I mean, it, the thought, you know, of going from one to the, to the other, I mean, that has to be a dramatic, you know, that's got, I mean, I would never think in my life to go and go talk to somebody else that has a different God than me to say, hey, my God's not doing anything. Can you see if your God will do something? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, they they were definitely afraid. I mean, and for them to, to abandon their God and go to Jonah, yeah. that, the Ask him to please pray to his God. That, that's a that's a major event. There's a there's a side story to this too. It's not just Jonah and the situation that's going on. It's also what I'm seeing now is also those sailors, um, because imagine because further on I don't, don't want to step on your toes, brother, but further on in the verses they end up throwing them overboard and the, and the storm calmed. Imagine what's going through their head now at that point. Oh, okay, so whose God is real now? Is it the God that we used to worship, or is it this God that this, this prophet worship? You know what I mean? Jonah's whole story is just the concept redeeming itself over and over again. And yeah. in, in theory, it's like almost like the whole New Testament. Yeah. Like, Jonah's story is like, it 
it has a lot of relation to the Gentiles and the Jews in the New Testament, and of this like the, of the prophet and like the the um, uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, Sadducees like not um, like not believing Jesus is Christ and like not um, like not allowing like the Gentiles to it was not accepting the the um, the the good news, right? And then the Gentiles ultimately being the ones to accept it. Jonah's whole story and like is it's a it's a mirror. A reflection. Yeah. Yeah. That's where God uses that what you were saying, brother, where God has shown his presence now through this captain saying Yeah. You know, you know, wake up. You know, I'm here. Yeah. And it, in the midst of all this, even the pagan sailors knew this was something divine, you know. And you see how God can sometimes use pagans, or people in this case, that we don't expect to get us out of our storms. You know, sometimes God will send us a certain individual or family member where they go to speak to us about, you know, the storm. And... I, I, I think this is a beautiful um, lesson right here, you know, where um, we see how God can sometimes use uh, the most unbelieving, uh, most pagan individual possible to speak uh, truth to us. And I, I've, I have no doubt that God was speaking through this captain to tell Jonah, you need to get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice on us and we will not perish. So ultimately we see... Uh, Right here, Jonah almost getting a wake-up call. You know, the little slap on the face, like, get up. What are you doing? You know, it's it's definitely a a, a, a real, real uh, just amazing sight, you know, uh, you know, from us. We see a lot of contrast. I think that when we look at it, if we look at it um, in, in, in from the aspect of, of narrative context, the writer gives us a lot of clues as to what he's doing here. There's a lot of contrast, compare and contrast. Um, for example, you know, we talked about, well, why did God send the storm? And God can send storms, like you said, in a lot of variety of ways. Sometimes it's not God sending the storm. Sometimes we create our own storm. Uh, and sometimes it's the enemy trying to oppose us. So we have to have wisdom and say, Lord, what, what's happening right now? Um, you know, if, if, if we all stopped in the presence of storms, then we wouldn't know the word perseverance, which is highly merited in, in biblical you know, aspects. But at the same time, we have to have the wisdom to say, maybe this is directional because this is responsive. When you see the word in verse four, uh, and I prefer the ESV or the NASB in this because it's a little bit more precise. The, there's more precision in its language. For example, on verse four, do you have and the Lord? Uh, hurled a great wind, or does it say, but the Lord? Then the Lord. Then the Lord. So then or but is more correct. It, that's the, in the Hebrew uh, conjunction there is va. And what it means is as a result. Well, as a result of what? Of what preceded. Well, what preceded? Well, in verse 3, he left and went the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So God, this storm is responsive to Jonah. This is Jonah's storm. That's how I titled it in my book. Mm -hmm. This is specifically Jonah's storm. And I think somebody referenced it. They throw him off the boat and it stops. This is specifically Jonah's storm. And sometimes we get caught up in other people's storms. And, and, and we, have to, we have to have the wisdom to say, what's going on here? The other thing that I don't like about the NIV uh, is that whenever they go uh, in verse 5, when they each cried out to his own God, I think the NIV capitalizes it. No, in verse 5, they each cried out to his own God. That's a little g. Little g yeah. A little g. So there's a contrast happening from verse 4 where they're each afraid and crying out to his own little g God, versus verse 6, uh, call out to your own God, that's the big G. So so what's happening there is there's a reference to, like what Kirk was saying, little g versus big G, mm -hmm. and the difference between gods, and who is real, and, and, and what's happening there. The other, you know, of course, I think Kirk talked about it as well, arise, and he goes down, goes down, and he goes down into the inner parts. Right. And and there's also a big contrast between the sailors. You see panic and fear of God versus slumber and denial and rejection. So there's a huge response. And of course, the irony is these guys didn't even know God and they had the, the common sense to be afraid. 
And this guy is running from God and, and, and showing complete ignorance as to who God is. So there's this huge irony constantly contrasting. And the, and the truth is, what's the lesson there? The truth is that sometimes people who are not even believers uh, shame us. God uses non-believers to say, look, this person's acting more faithful than you. And they're not even a believer. Mm -hmm. I've met people that have put me in my place and have humbled me. I look and I mean, I remember one time um, speaking about my circumstances and I was just whining and complaining and just bemoaning myself. And the other person was offering uh, encouragement and lifting me up and showing, and they weren't even a believer. And I, and I, I, I said, shame on me. This person is showing more, uh, more uh, uh, perseverance and more faith. Uh, and they don't even have a relationship with God. And so a lot of times God uses the faithless to teach and to guide the faithful or supposedly the faithful. And, um, and finally, of course, I know that we talked about it before, but um, we compare the Jonah event versus the Jesus event. Jonah asleep in the midst of a storm. Jesus asleep in the midst of a storm. Sailors uh, who don't know God afraid. Disciples who are followers of Christ afraid. But there's a parallel there, and the, and, and the, the New Testament writer did that exactly for that reason, to, to contrast. Here's a man who is completely out of uh, out of. Uh, out of control there he has he has no power nothing and he's sleeping because he's ignorant and and incapable jesus is sleeping because he is in control because he is god the storm is his mm -hmm. and so there is this parallel there oh yes thank you for that yeah uh, the, the, uh, and one more thing and i'll shut up uh notice what he says at the end and i i loved uh, uh, uh building this up in my book maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish you asked earlier, you asked earlier, why did, why did uh, God send him to Nineveh? And you said to preach, right? But notice verse 2, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it. And God tells us why. For their evil has come up before me. God is a God who notices. Our God is a God who takes notice of us. Maybe he will take notice of us. That's the lesson there. The, the sailor's like, you know, because if God, if God is speaking through the sailor, the sailor is speaking of the character of God. Call out to him because maybe he will take notice of us. Well, we know he does because even the great city of Nineveh. So people always talk about, well, what about those other people? God has always, has always cried out and, and, and delivered messages and take, taken notice of all peoples in all generations, in all cultures. There's never been a single person that's ever died not knowing an opportunity to, to know God, not having that opportunity. Nobody has an excuse. That's what Romans 12 teaches us, that no one is without excuse. We, they all are given that opportunity. And, and to me, that's the most important uh, thing in verse 6. Maybe he will take notice of us. To me, I mean, what they don't realize is that all of God's attention is on them right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, they take notice of us. Yeah, well, no, he, he notices you because no, all my attention's on you right now. Exactly, yeah. And so... I think that's the, if, if I were to, to preach these first six verses, mm -hmm. the title of the sermon would be, uh, would be uh, The God Who Notices. Mm -hmm. That's really what's happening here. Yeah, and God notices Nineveh and he notices the circumstances. It's really a humbling response because, you know, you see, like, maybe he'll take notice of us, not like, God save us. You know, there's a difference in response, you know, in those two, but... You know, I, I, even these pagans, you know. Did you notice what Kirk said? I think it was real profound. I think he did it by accident. But you know, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But I'm just joking. No, but he really said, uh, uh, Kirk said something really profound there. How often do we, we're in the storm, like, Lord, where are you? Are you not noticing? And a lot of times, that is the noticing. Mm. Like, you want me to make the storm bigger? You don't think I notice you? <laughs> Sometimes the storm is God's presence. Mm -hmm. I think what, what Kirk says there cannot be overlooked. A lot of times we have to really understand the circumstances that we're in. I've learned by experience that the storms, the greatest storms, are where I felt the greatest presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, instead of saying, Lord, where are you? Sometimes that is where God is. And the evidence is the storm. Yeah. Yes, you, you show thankfulness during that storm as well. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I think this was a great, um, you know, study, and, you know, uh, uh, as we read scriptures throughout the first uh, chapter one, this is this is only half of uh, chapter one. Where there's uh, there's plenty of other th great things you know to read from the book of Jonah. And I want to thank you for those comments, everybody. 
Um, but I, I think that pretty much wraps up the study. I mean, there's uh, not much else to say about that. I mean, it's just, um, it's just amazing how God takes notice of us, you know, even in the midst of our storms. You know, it's sometimes we may feel like we're unseen, but God sees us in our, in our fullness. But amen. 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 Well, I want to thank you all again um, is, uh, for all the for all those comments that were shared, and uh, um, we'll go ahead and just wrap wrap this up in a closing prayer. Lord Father, we come to you today thanking you for allowing us to uh, to, to, to learn about your your word, Lord. Uh, and Lord, uh, we we learn from this lesson that you take notice of us, and that uh, that sometimes the storms that you you send to us, it's a sign for us to to wake up and for us to come back to you, Lord. Uh, we we thank you for all that you do in our lives and we ask that you just bless today's services uh, for those who gather together uh, we, we thank you for all that you do in your son's precious name amen amen, amen. great study